Welcome to Fire Yourself First. I'm your host, Wendy Verway. This podcast is all about saving you money, helping you spend with intention, and create new income streams so that you can be financially free. FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. Learning about this movement was a total game changer for me and allowed me to retire as a single mom at 41. And now I am thrilled to bring my experience with it to you. So stay tuned for new episodes where we'll explore strategies and mindset shifts that lead to financial freedom. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Fire Yourself First podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Verway, and I'm so excited to be here today with Court Brown, who is a fellow fire enthusiast (laughs) and was able to retire in her 30s with her partner and two young children. So when I talk about how fire really is accessible to anybody, um, it really is. So Court is here to help inspire you and show you what is also possible. So welcome, Court. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks so much for having me on, Wendy. I'm excited for this. Absolutely. So Give us a little bit of a backstory around your journey. First of all, how did you get into FIRE, into financial independence, retire early? What what was your first start into this whole world? Yeah, so it's a little bit of a funny story. So I started off, I'm born and raised in the States, now live up in Canada. We moved here in 2016. So up prior to that point, we're in the US. Um, I had student loans and in the US, it's very typical to have a nice large number of student loans. So I started off with $65,000 US um, student loan debt and Nick, my partner had 40,000. So combined, we had over $100,000 of student loan debt. Um, Started off with our first job out of school. I mean, after little part-time jobs along the way. Right. But our first, what I call big girl job. Um, and I was living across the street from work. I was, I had roommates at the time. I was still living that frugal college lifestyle. Um, and now that I had this paycheck to my name, I'm like, okay, I need to do something with this. That's when it was the, Oh, wow. Like I have all this debt. I really should get on top of this. So I continued to keep my expenses relatively low and just funneled a whole bunch of my income into the student loans. So in two and a half years, I was able to pay off my student loan debt. And that was a starting salary around $65,000, $70,000. So um, did that super aggressive, you know, whereas most people are paying a couple hundred dollars a month type of thing. I was paying over a thousand dollars a month. Um, Then once the student loans were paid off, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I should save up for a down payment for a home sort of thing. So I started saving and that's when one of my coworkers, I was working shift work at the time and on nights it can get a little bit slow. And she had a Mr. Money Mustache blog. And this was back in 2011, 2012, when he was kind of just starting out and the whole fire movement, the modern fire movement was kind of just really taking off kind of back then. And I didn't really get along with her. She was super lazy. Like I ended up doing, you know, double the amount of work when I worked shift with her. And so we weren't like good friends by any means. So she said like, Oh, like, have you heard of Mr. Money mustache? And I just kind of blew it off. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, Hmm, Mr. Money mustache. Let me go to that website. So I go to this website and then I end up devouring the whole thing. So I have this coworker to thank who I'm not, not even acquaintances (laughs) with, you know, but she kind of started this journey for me. So I ended up going back and reading all of his blog posts and he can be a little aggressive to some people. He's very, you know, to the point, like, you know, punch you in the face if you're spending too much money type of thing. So, and a lot of people don't like that type of writing, but for me, it really resonated for me. I'm like, okay, this makes sense to me. Like, yes, I should not be going out and buying a new car. I should not be buying a more expensive house than I can afford. Instead, why don't I buy a house that has rooms in it and I can rent those rooms out to roommates. So that's what I ended up doing. So thankfully learned about fire still while I was in my early twenties living with roommates at that point still bought this house, ended up renting out this townhouse that we bought, ended up being able to pay off the mortgage in two and a half years because we got it at a good price. And we were just filling it with roommates. Like I have four roommates living with me. So between their like one roommate was paying for the mortgage. So three other roommates paying excess 
plus what I was able to put in now that my student loans were gone. Now I was supercharging the mortgage, right? So in two and a half years, that mortgage was gone. So the housing picture has always been a very low number for us. Whereas most people, your housing is your, your largest expense, right? So that townhouse, when we sold it, paid for our Canadian townhouse once we moved up here. And then we ended up renting that out for a year or two when we, when we moved into our single family home. And by the time we sold that townhouse from, from Canada, we, that then has paid off our mortgage on our current house. So it was kind of the gift that kept on giving, you know, that we, you know, of course we have property taxes and home insurance, but that's pretty minimal when you look at the big scheme of things with housing. Right. So um, that was kind of my fire beginning in a nutshell, but it all kind of has stuck with me. Like I never let lifestyle creep really go up there. Even from when I went from no income, very small income, working a part-time job in school to now making this money to start off. You know, a lot of people see it as, okay, I've never had this money before. Look, I've made it. You know, I, I now get to spend this money. Like I need to treat myself because I deserve it. Right. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're also saving as well, you know, if you're spending everything and going into credit card debt because of it, or, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, that's when we've got a problem. So it's, you know, focusing on future you and knowing that if you are able to save and invest 50 ish percent of your income, which I know sounds crazy to most people, but if you can rein in all those, that lifestyle creep that's come up along the way, and you're really able to focus on what you value. Most people don't know what they value, you know, um, and they just spend because they spend, they spend because their neighbors or their friends or their coworkers or their family does this. So we're going to do that too. So if you'd actually take a look and see what it is that you actually value, you can probably cut out a lot of fluff. There's a lot of fluff in those people's lives. And then, yeah, so for us, it was, you know, from 2009 is when I started my first job out of school. And in 2011 is when I quit completely. And Nick's was even shorter journey. So she was a little younger and still in school while I started. And she was a nurse for four years. And then our oldest child was born and that's when she stopped working five years ago. So for her, it was a four-year journey. For me, it was a, what was that? 12-year journey basically. And yeah, our income was about $115,000 combined between the two of us. So it's not like we were these tech bros, you know, making $300,000 each and able to save, you know, oh, of course you can save a good amount. You know, it was just figuring out that a simple life is a happy life and having time is the most freeing thing that allows you to spend your days how you want. Yeah. And that is so priceless, you know? So we might have a day where we go for a bike ride and then go to the library and check out 20 books. And that's our day. And we're good with that. Like most people think like, well, that's your day, you know, but we are so happy that that is our day, you know? So it's just reframing your mind and your mindset and realizing like, you don't have to cram it with so many things. You don't have to be so stressed out at work that you then feel like you need to go out to eat. You need to go for a massage. You need to go for a vacation because you just eliminate those stresses from your life and you realize, okay, like life's pretty good, you know? So sorry, I babbled, but that's kind of my, that's my, my spiel in a, you know, however long that took to get out. <laughs> that was amazing. And I love that you started out that way. Mm -hmm. You started out from the get-go and had that as a foundation because so many people don't have that. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they don't start out with that mindset of simple life. A simple life is a good life, right? Mm -hmm. You see all of the things, all of the consumerism, um, you know, you've got to buy the, the big car, you've got to buy the big house, you've got to impress your coworkers, all of these sorts of things that we get sold constantly. So the fact that you're able to remove yourself from that completely is pretty amazing, especially just starting out. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of the people that I end up talking to now, you know, are similar age to me now in my mid thirties, and they are just learning about this sort of stuff. Right. And like, but we have the mortgage that's probably too big for what we actually need. We have the car loans because we, that's all we knew was to just buy a new car and finance it. And we go out all the time and we do, we spend so much money. So yeah, I was really lucky to have found this at the age that I did. So it wasn't like 
my spending took off. And then I felt like, oh, I'm now depriving myself by having to cut out things. There wasn't that upward and then downward pressure, you know, to get back to the square one level. It was just when we were, we, we would go to the beach, like I lived by the beach, we would roller skate over to the beach and that would be our day, you know, put on music and that we get for free and put it on an old iPad type of thing. And that was five years old. And, you know, you got a day made out of it, right. Or go to happy hour instead of feel like you need to go out to a you know proper bar type of setup, you know, thing. So we're still being very social. We were playing on hockey teams and doing stuff, but just very mindful of how we were going about it and spending our money to have these enjoyable experiences. Like we would volunteer at these music concerts so we would help with the setup or whatever it might be, you know, for an hour or two before it starts. And then you get in for free. So like we could still go and do these things, but we're just doing it at a much lower cost than the typical standard go online to Ticketmaster or wherever and buy your ticket. Right. So it's just thinking outside of the box with and applying that to everything, like literally everything can be applied that can be applied to. So it's just more, you know, out of the box thinking of how do I do the things that I want to do? but at a lower cost. So like, for example, now with our kids, most parents have a zoo membership and a science center membership and a sports center membership and, uh, you know, all the different little amusement parky type of things and the petting zoo. And next thing you know, for your year, you've got eight different passes to go to. It's like, well, when are you going to those things? So for us, it's like, let's pick one or two for the year. So this year might be the zoo and the science center. Next year might be the petting zoo and the amusement park type of place. And you just spend more time there. And you actually can utilize those passes. So now, you know, the, the overall cost is maybe $10 each time you go versus 50 each time you go. If the pass costs for 200 and you go four times, we'll try and make it so you can go 10 times, you know, something like that, right? So you're still going and doing things and your kids don't know any better, right? Like as they get over, older, of course, they have more say and opinion, but ours are two and five. So yeah. they're just, you know, happy to go and do things. And for the most time, it's library parks, you know, that sort of stuff that's free. So like, that's another thing. It's like kids don't have to be so expensive, but again, with lifestyles creep, if you start off, buy, buy, buying for your kids, then you just think that's what you have to do. But if you can shift that mindset around like, oh, there's buy nothing groups, there's Facebook marketplace, there's neighbors that I can, whoa, actually figure out who my neighbors are and like ask them for things, you know, all those sorts of things that are out there. That's just most people aren't thinking about because our, you know, our society has just shifted into this buy, buy, buy consumerism, you know, materialistic world it's like, we don't have to live that way if you choose not to. Absolutely. I love it. And, you know, I've, I've done a lot of the same things in my own life and, you know, my kids are slightly older, yeah. uh, but we've, we've done that for years. Right. And we've looked at, you know, what is it that we're trying to achieve? Well, we want to spend some time together. Mm-hmm. We're going to remember that they're not going to care what restaurant we went to. They're, you know, right. all of that sort of thing. When I left, um, when I got divorced and we had this acreage home and it was this big four level split house. It was beautiful. Mm. Um, I didn't want it. Mm. I, you know, I was a single mom working full time, stressed out all the time. The last thing I wanted to do was go home to this massive house and clean it and cut the grass and have to deal with all of the things. And so we did a full Marie Kondo (laughs) of our entire life. And I moved the kids to a small duplex in town. And I was able to walk to work. And so I didn't have any commuting costs. I saved a ton of time by doing that. Mm -hmm. Uh, The kids didn't need after school care or before school care. They took the school bus back and forth to school. And I was able to be there before and after. So I didn't have to pay for all of these things. And my first, one of my first thoughts was, you know, we had this two acre yard that Mm -hmm. was beautiful and they loved it. We'd only lived there for a couple of years. So it wasn't like they were, you know, born and raised there. But you know, they loved it. And we had our dog and we had all these trees and and it was lovely. So when we moved to the duplex and it, it's all about the marketing, right? And it's all about the branding. <laughs> so for me, I had this conversation with the kids around, okay, yeah, we don't have a giant yard, but there is a humongous park at the end of the street. And 
I don't have to cut the grass. Exactly. Pull any weeds. We can show up whenever we want and don't have to do any work. And there will always be friends there because everybody's welcome at the park. You don't have to make a plan. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all of these things. And so that first night in this duplex, we dropped our stuff in the in the living room, you know, dropped a few things off. And I'm like, well, let's go to this park and we're gonna go find the best climbing tree. <laughs> And so we did, we found the best climbing tree and we still like just last week, it was so nice out and I was sitting in front of my computer. I'm like, I need to go for a walk. And I climbed the tree (laughs) in the middle of the day. I'm like, this is what it's all about. Having the freedom to go and do these things. And the kids don't care. It doesn't cost money. I didn't have to pay an admission. Nobody needed a wristband. No one needed a security pass. Um, You know, I didn't have to show any ID. It was... (laughs) It was, you can just show up and enjoy because there's so much to enjoy in this world that you don't have to pay somebody else for. Exactly. Exactly. There's so many free free things out there. Get outside. Like that is simple enough. Like go for a bike ride, go for a walk, go for a run, skate, whatever, go cross country ski. Like, yeah, certain things might come with an upfront cost. Let's say you need to buy the cross country skis but you now have them for 10, 15, 20 years, however long they last, you just go, you know, like go find a hiking buddy or whoever might be like go solo. There's so many benefits to going solo as well, but you know, both sides, like have a friend go outside and get fresh air, talk, you know, release some mental, you know, stresses that way. And it's a winning combination. And next thing you know, it's been five hours and you're starving and you come home and you have dinner and it was a good day, you know, like costume right? But we feel like when we meet up with friends, we have to go to lunch or we have to go to dinner and it's got to be something, you know, a place that we don't go to because we got to treat ourselves for whatever reason. It's like, go to a coffee shop. If you feel like you need to go somewhere, get the two, three, $4 coffee, whatever, stay there three hours. Like, okay. Or better yet, go outside and bring your own coffee and walk with your own thermos. But if you don't want to do that, you know, weather's not great, whatever. Um, there's, go meet at a library. You know, like you don't have to go somewhere that costs money to go and enjoy and create these relationships because ultimately it's your community and relationships that you're building up. That's going to create this fulfilling life, whether it's with your kids or your neighbors, or your friends or whoever, but it doesn't have to come at a cost, like have a potluck dinner or, you know, have someone over for breakfast or brunch, you know, that cost a fraction of the price of dinner, you know, whatever you can kind of tweak things accordingly. And if you have a friend that's like, Oh, I'm not coming over for brunch. Like, then that's not the type of friend you want. You know, like you got to <laughs> find the type of friend that's like, Oh yeah, this sounds like a great idea. You know, I'm so glad we're meeting at the library instead of, you know, at this fancy restaurant instead, you know, you want to find those people that that's you're cool with them. You know, that is your tribe. You know, you got to find those people that connect with you on that level as well. So that way you can, those are the relationships you want to build up anyways. Right. So it's kind of, it's kind of like you're just doing all the things you want to do while finding the people that that aligns with them is like, oh yeah, this is a good time. Like I'll come over to your house with my kids versus we feel like we have to go somewhere. We have to go to the zoo or wherever it may be. I am a babysitter. And- right, exactly. <laughs> it's like have these little play dates, you know, the kids are having fun too. The parents get to connect and yeah, it's chaotic and everything, but like that's the whole point. It's like, you want to build, like you want the kids to build these relationships. You want the parents to build their relationships. Right. So that's ultimately what it comes down to. And it really does not come with a crazy price, but the world we live in makes it seem like if you want to be happy, you have to spend money to do so. And it's just unfortunate that that's, you know, what we're all fed. And it's like, no, it really, it's not, it doesn't have to be that like that. Yeah. It's so true. I know when I first retired from my corporate job, um, I kind of went through this, I don't know if we call it a work hangover or, (laughs) or what it was, right. I just, I went through this rest period where it's like, I have no idea who I am. I don't know what I want any of those sorts of things because I didn't have the routine and I didn't have, you know, a reason to wake up at a certain time every day and all of those sorts of things. And I actually took a friend out for coffee one day who had retired traditionally at 65. Yeah. I called her up. I'm like, I need some retirement lessons. Can you, can you teach me how to do this? And so we went for coffee and she said exactly the same thing. Find, find your tribe, find your community. 
um, just find some groups that are doing things that you like doing and go do those things, right? Whether it's joining a bowling team or what I ended up doing, actually, it was even through COVID. Um, and I feel like this, this whole premise was really, really highlighted for everybody through mm-hmm. COVID, right? Yeah. That you don't have to go to a place. You don't have to gather. You can go for a walk, right? Like I, we both live in Alberta. So we're close to the mountains. Mm-hmm. So I would go for a drive and I would hike in the mountains. And I'm like, lockdown's not so bad when you live in a postcard, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the trees don't care <laughs> about any of it. Let's go see the trees, right? And I, I always felt this sense of freedom, um, you know, no matter what was going on in the world um, mm-hmm. by being outside in nature and just enjoying and being grateful for what we have all around us. And so even through COVID, right, trying to figure out, well, what what can I do now that I don't have a job to go to? And I found Facebook groups and I, you know, I found groups that were hiking mm-hmm. and it didn't have to be a big thing. You don't have to go to, you know, whatever store and buy the boots and get the poles and everything like to find a nice walk. It <laughs> you don't need all the equipment, but there are people that are doing things mm-hmm. that you already enjoy. And even if you don't know if you enjoy them, go try it. Right out there, they're setting up these things saying, Hey, I'm meeting at this trailhead at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Come and join me if you like. Yeah. And then you just go <laughs> and you show up and say, Hi, I'm Wendy. And I've done that and I've made so many great friends by doing those things because it's an activity that I already enjoy. Yeah. And then you just go. That's yeah. how you find them. Yeah. <laughs> by doing things. <laughs> exactly. And like, I admit it is hard to make new friends, like as you get older. Right. But you, these things do exist, right? Like, like you said, it's like find, make a list of 10 things that interest you and go test it out. Now there's these park runs where you can just go and do, you know, a 5k, whether you're walking, running, sprinting, whatever, but they're all over like globally now. So you can go onto their website, see when the one year you is going to be and like, try it out. You know, that's just one example, right? Like I came across dogs. some dogs walking yeah. <laughs> on Saturday. I just walked to the end of my street. I was taking my son. He wanted to go to the comic book store and there was like a dog parade. We're like, what is happening? Right now? <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, we meet every Saturday. I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> yes. You have so many little things like this, right? Like, and if something, if, if there's something that interests you and you can't find anything nearby, make it like create it yourself. Join your local Facebook page for your town or your community, whatever it might be, and just ask like, hey, is there anyone that might be interested on Tuesday afternoons going to so-and-so and and we just make this a weekly thing? You might find one, two, three other people and that's how it grows. You know, we started this little FI meetup group in our town and lo and behold, like our town is about a little less than 40,000 people. And we've got a good group here of 10 ish people with kids around the same age as our family. And they're all into fire. I'm like, oh, hey, this is great. You know, they're on different parts of their journey, which doesn't matter, but it's like, you understand the concepts, you understand that this is like a value driven thing. And you just automatically connect with someone. I've noticed when you kind of get that baseline of like, yeah, we're all thinking the same financially. We might be at different steps and different paths, but like it just opens up like your communication about everything else to the next level. Like it's just, okay, we can now talk about X, Y, Z because I'm feeling comfortable with you with this. Like I can tell you about this financial win about this other thing that we did because you get it, you know? So it's just, finding those people that make sense that to have in your life and your days suddenly get busy. Like our neighbor was just over, came over for a little play date and she looks at our calendar and she's like, Whoa, you guys are busy. And it's like, well, yeah, we just find things to do. You know, like we don't have to do all the things on the calendar, but I just write down all the things going on. It's like, if we want to do this on Friday, we can do either this that's 11 or this that's at one or this that's at four or all three, if we really want, you know, like you got to decide how you want to design your days. And ultimately like, that's what this is all about, right? It's like, I don't have to be logging into my computer and being at work at you know 8.30 and be listening to my boss and have to do all these things with this deadline and have to stay late and blah, blah, blah. I don't have to do that anymore. So I feel like a lot of people listening who are not on this other side of the journey think like, well, what am I, what's my day's going to be like? I'm going to be so bored and I don't like, I need that structure of work. And it's like, 
okay, well, first off, no one's saying you have to stop working. Like if you want to keep working and you feel like that's something you want to do, like by all means, or shift to part-time or reduce your hours to where you're only going in one or two days a week to give you that social connection to your coworkers. If that's something you don't think you can get rid of, like, fine, keep doing that. But in those other days, like start building that lifestyle that you want. Like, do you want to be an early riser and get up at five and go for a run and be done with breakfast by eight? And now you're like, feel accomplished. Now you can rest and relax for the rest of the day. Or do you want to sleep in till 10 o'clock? Or do you have kids who wake you up no matter what by seven o'clock, which, you know, it was us. And but we are busy with our kids. Like we have just basically transitioned to full-time parents, which is a completely taxing job and so draining that we don't feel like we can even breathe some days till eight o'clock. So for us, that's the job that we have transitioned to right now. But once they're both in school full-time, you know, that's when it's going to be like, okay, now we can actually breathe and do these sorts of activities that we've wanted to do during the day. Like go for a swim at nine o'clock and then, you know, have a coffee afterwards or, you know, how, whatever it is. Right. But it's all about structuring your days to align with what you want to do. And to me, that does not sound boring at all. That sounds amazing. Like you can go do these things at a low cost, like we were just talking about. So it's not like, well, now that I'm not at work at work, I was making money. Now that I'm not working, I have to spend all this money. No, now you can go for the walks. You can do whatever you want to do. That's a low cost activity. And it's even more enjoyable. You're not stressed. You don't feel like okay, now I need to plan this vacation because all we have is this two weeks off or three weeks off and we got to go to Mexico right during this peak time frame because that's the only time that we can. Like, no, we can go for a little camping trip here. We can. So for us, we went to Portugal for two months earlier this year. We rented out our house and the rental income, basically it paid for all of our Airbnbs while that we were there. It paid for all of our flights besides getting to Portugal, but all the intra- Europe type of flights, all the baggage fees and all of our transit, like car rental for while we were there. Mm -hmm. So for most people, it, so it ended up being a, a net of about $2,000 for us to get from Calgary to Europe. Like that was our out of expense costs. Two months. Well, we had food and of course, right. you know, things that we would spend here. Right. But from the travel standpoint, $2,000 to go for two months, most people that would be a ten, fifteen thousand dollar trip, right? Or going for your two, three week trip is five thousand dollars or whatever it might be, right? But if you have this time freedom, you can think more creatively about it. And be like, okay, like we can, we were able to be flexible with the dates, with flights that lined up with the best airfare, you know, uh, timeline and cost. And then we can find rentals, a, a renter to come in and we were able to be selective. We put it out, you know, months in advance because we knew this was happening and our, a lot of people are moving into our towns. So like we knew we would get the interest from it. It's like, okay, let's just try this out for a year. Like for us, two months, two months was too long with our games. <laughs> but at least it can practice though, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Freedom to practice and see what's Yes, <laughs> exactly. So it's just like, thinking like that, you know, like most people can't think of a two month trip, yeah. but because we were, had this time, we were able to pull our daughter out of preschool is no big deal. We're like, why don't we try it now? And so we did, you know, like that's the freedom to all of this and it doesn't come at a cost. And that's like the biggest catch 22 to all of this is now that we're home and we're here Monday through Friday, when most people are working, we can go to all the free parenting type classes that are out there. We can go to the library story time. We can go to the rumble and roar class where they have plasma cars and bouncy houses. We can go to the indoor turf time. We can go to $5 drop in gymnastics. We don't have to sign them up for the Saturday morning gymnastics because we can go Fridays at one when most people can't. And it's just $5 as you come and go, you know, things like that, where it ends up being where we can do a lot of kid type of activities but it comes at a very low cost because they're Mondays at two, you know, they're trying to get people to come in and connect with other moms and parents, you know, parents in the, in the community. It's like, okay, like this all is great. So we are busy, but it comes at no cost to us, you know? So it's like, it's really this catch 22 when most people only have the weekends and they're stressed and they've got to do their grocery shopping and their laundry and all the meal prep and all that stuff. But the only thing you could do is swimming lessons at this one time slot, because that's all that was available. It's like, 
well, we just go swimming at nine in the mornings when no one's there. Like we don't go on the weekends. We hibernate on the weekends. <laughs> don't do things that, you know? That's the thing, right? Once you become a phi or once you get into the whole phi world, it's like, you don't stand in lines anymore. That's mm-hmm. not <laughs> Please. Don't waste my time standing in lines with everybody else. No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's like, you feel bad that like you see all these people living this like standard life. And it's like, yeah. it doesn't have to be like that. You know, like if you can start off by saving $10 a month, turn that into $50 a month, turn that into a hundred dollars a month. And that's either by earning more income or spending less money. Like that is literally the two things in your core that you can control. One, you might be able to control more than the other, pick up a side gig, ask for a raise, go back to school, get a better job, you know, that sort of thing, or really take a fine tooth comb and look and see what it is that you're spending your money on. Like, I'm not, I am not a budgeter. I am not into budgets, but track your spending, like have an understanding of where your money is going and see like, oh, okay. Like, oh yeah. Like two weeks ago, I bought those shoes, but like, I haven't even worn them yet, or they're not comfortable or whatever. Like, yep. okay, so then I'm not going to keep up with my shoe fetish. And I'm just going to like <laughs> buy, you know, one pair of shoes and like actually wear that to the ground. Right. Or, you know, whatever your thing is, like everyone's got a thing, right. Is it Amazon? Is it whatever? Right. Like Starbucks. Figure, Who knows? <laughs> right. Like figure out what your trigger is. And like, yeah. can you reduce that somehow? And you might have a, a couple of different things or, you know, maybe you end up going out to eat a whole bunch or you go out and do, you know, Uber eats or DoorDash or whatever, I'll skip the dishes. Do you have to do that? Like, can you switch that? Can you go and actually pick it up or can you make your own food or switch to a, you know, a food, maybe a hello fresh type of thing where you're making it yourself, you know, but all the ingredients are there, you know, make these little tweaks to figure out, okay, we did that. No, I actually like the door dash. Okay, bring door back, dash back into your life. What else can you decide on tweaking? Can we switch Mondays to, you know, meatless Monday and like make it a vegetarian day or whatever? Like make these little tweaks. You're like, okay, that ended up saving us $20 a week. Great. Like, I think we can do that going forward. And it's just like these lifestyle tweaks. It doesn't have to be all at once where you're like, boom, I'm going to get rid of everything. But we have Disney and Hulu and Netflix and blah, 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 all the subscriptions can we just have one for the month and see if we can survive with just one? And we like actually just watch whatever's on that subscription platform and then do that for another month or two. And we feel like, all right, we've utilized everything from Netflix. Like, Let's now switch, get rid of Netflix and only have Disney plus for the next three months or whatever it might be. Right. Like these are all little tweaks, but I'm not saying get rid of it completely. It's just think of it differently. Like just design your life differently is all that it really comes down to. Right. And figure and figure out what it is that you value. Like, do you need the super high speed internet or can you go down to one level, save $20 a month and it's still functional, right? It's like just making these little tweaks along the way and realizing, okay, we just tweak those four things. That's bringing in an extra hundred dollars a month. Not bad. Like we still have internet. We still have shows to watch, you know, but it's, making just these slight adjustments to it that now we have an extra hundred dollars in our pocket and now we can invest that hundred dollars. What can we do next month? Oh yeah, let's try that out. And that saves us another $50. You know, things like that, right? Of just making these small little adjustments, realizing like we don't need the TELUS and the Shaws of the world. There are smaller companies out there and to, for everything, you know, for car insurance, home insurance, oh, no. internet, you know, and most Canadians don't realize that because it seems like it's this monopoly out there. There's only these big, large companies, but there are smaller independent companies out there. You just got to find them. You got to learn about them, right? It's like making these little tweaks. And next thing you know, you're saving now $500 for the month. And that's all you need, like save $500 a month. And you're like, you're good, you know, start off there and then, you know, build that momentum, right? Um, Most people, their most expensive things are their housing, their transportation, and their food. So start there. Like I, so many people talk about, you know, like cutting out that latte and go, don't going out to Starbucks and you know, that, that it's like that $3 a day. That's like doing, yeah. It's like, that's not it. Like you need to think about the bigger things. Like what is home insurance? For example, are you paying $2,500 for your home insurance? Well, there's probably a, a, an option that out there that you can reduce that down to 1200 boom, like that's a couple thousand dollars over a, a year that you're saving. And that's your latte. Like, you know what I mean? Like you still have your car insurance or your home insurance or whatever. It's just with a different provider who's 
still providing the same service, but at a fraction of the cost. So go get that latte, like especially go get that latte with a friend and turn it into, you know, a co- an actual proper coffee break from work and you're connecting and you're having this, you're building that relationship. Go spend that $3 there. That's not what I'm saying to take out. It's like take out, like focus on the bigger things that are not really going to change your life that drastically. Look at the fees that you're paying for your investment. Look at what you're actually investing in. You know, who do you bank with? What are they providing? Are you paying a bank, uh, a monthly fee to have your bank open? Like those are the things I'm talking about. Like we can shift away from all these extra added fees that most people just don't think about. Like "Mm, if I'm going to use them, I'm going to pay $30 a a month to have my bank. You know, like most people just do it and they think that that's all there is available. So dig in and figure out what options are out there to reduce your spend, but you're not depriving yourself along the way, right? Like that's the big thing. Exactly. And I, that's exactly what I preach. I talk about tracking your spending, looking at where are these little hidden things that you hadn't thought about and you won't find them until you start tracking them. Right. right? And same thing with the whole Starbucks idea. I talk about Starbucks a lot <laughs> in a bunch of different ways. Right. And so it's, <laughs> It's not necessarily that I I don't hate Starbucks. I don't love Starbucks. It's it's a place to go. I, I like to go to um, an independent coffee shop yes. because I work from home and mm-hmm. I'm alone a lot. And sometimes I want to go out and be among the people. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Right. And sometimes I want a coffee and don't want to make it at home. So I will go to the local coffee shop and because it's a nice atmosphere. There are nice people there. It is sunny. I'm using their Wi-Fi. I'm probably going to use their bathroom. So, you know, that five dollar cup of coffee was well worth it Mm -hmm. in that instance. Right. It's not just, well, I have to spend eight dollars a day because everybody else is doing that because that's habit. It's no, I'm doing this for a reason. And it's part of this life that I want to lead. I want to be able to go to the coffee shop and work and make relationships. I was so excited um, because I haven't been going to this one shop very often, but apparently I've gone like, I don't know, three times in two weeks or something like that. And I ordered my, my, I don't know, chai tea latte or something like that. And I was about to walk away. I paid for it and was about to walk away. And, and the barista was like, oh, well, you get like almond milk or something with it, don't you? And I'm like, I do. You remembered that. Oh my God. I was like, so thrilled. (laughs) And I'm like, that's the difference, right? I can go to these small independent places and make relationships with people, even if it's the barista and, you know, she recognizes me. It was like, cheers, you know, walk in and they're like, Norm, it's you. Um, (laughs) But it feels good. Right. And it doesn't feel anonymous. And um, yeah, it's just being able to make those relationships and those connections. And I love what you said too around, you know, finding these these different ideas, right? And so many people they get caught. I mean, you've given a thousand examples <laughs> in this last few minutes, which is fantastic. I think people are gonna be taking notes. Um, rewinding, you know, if that's that's not a thing, that's how old I am. <laughs> um, you know, they're gonna be playing this back and and taking more notes and and picking up on all of these great tips. But getting into community with other people that are living this kind of lifestyle, this is where you learn all of these things. This is where I met court. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and even before before I met you, I had joined another Facebook group. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I didn't know that Phi had a name. Yeah. <laughs> I just knew that I was being very frugal and I was trying to live this lifestyle. And, you know, I'd read a bunch of books and it wasn't until after I was well on the path that I'd even heard of Mr. Money Mustache mm-hmm. from people like you. Yeah. Um, so that was really interesting. But I I started joining these Facebook groups and was just like, interested in some different ideas. And then one day I had come home and I didn't have anything planned. I'd been camping a bunch, uh, throughout the week. And I just hadn't put my camping gear away yet. And said to, I work with a trainer. That's another thing, right? Like I work with a trainer five days a week because I prioritize my health. So I have the time to do it. I have the money to do it. It's an investment for me. It's an investment in my body. Um, and I can do that because (laughs) I Mm -hmm. am. And so I come back from, from my trainers. I told them, oh yeah, I don't have any plans this weekend. It's going to be great. I don't even know what I'm going to do. And I get home and I check on Facebook and it says, you have an event this weekend. I'm like, I do. And, and <laughs> this, this choose FI Alberta, um, camping trip. Yeah. That, I'm like, maybe I said I'd maybe go to it, but I didn't know anybody 
<laughs> event. And, but it was, it was close by my house. It was about 45 minutes away. So I thought, well, again, put yourself out there, see what happens. I'm like, well, I haven't put my camping gear away yet. So I have it readily available. I'll just pack a cooler. I'll go. It's 45 minutes away. If they're all weirdos, I'll just leave. <laughs> I said to myself. <laughs> And so I just showed up and everybody was so welcoming and so lovely. And it was just chill, right? And you're camping. So there's no, you know, airs to put on, you know, some of them are well into financial independence and, you know, in the fat fire life, but it didn't see it because they were sleeping in tents and we're all kind of just out in nature, enjoying life. But the conversations that we had were so interesting. You know, I met people that were um, real estate investors. I met people that were into um, travel hacking, using credit cards, um, other properties. They had companies, they were investors, they, you know, did dividend stocks, all of these different things. And so I got to learn about little snippets and then learn about, you know, ways that people were saving money, ways they were traveling, ways they were doing all of these cool things for free that it would have taken me forever to figure out on my own. So yeah. finding these kinds of communities has been just pivotal. And even on the the weekend that I met you and you had um, a meetup in yeah. your town, it was so funny because it was my birthday weekend and I didn't have any plans. I was on my own. Um, and I'm like, I, I want to treat myself. <laughs> Cause I earned it. Right. Yeah. And so I booked a day. I went to the Nordic spa <clears throat> out in the mountains and it was, you know, the lap of luxury and there's all these hot tubs and saunas and all these things and I had a massage and it was lovely. And it, yes, it was definitely a treat, <laughs> Not something that I do every day. Um, but it was just nice to go and experience that. And then I ended up staying at a friend's house in Calgary that night because there was this, this potluck meetup. The next day, I'm like, yeah, I want to go and and see these people. So I come from the Nordic spa and I'm all relaxed and, you know, feeling all luxurious. And then I go to this camp out or, you know, a potluck picnic in the park and there's kids running around and there's all kinds of people. And I I only knew a few of them that had been at the camping thing that I'd met. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it was such a great event. And it was, again, just such a contrast between this like, you know, luxurious spa (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And a potluck picnic in the park. But honestly, I love the picnic so much more <laughs> <laughs> because I was able to make connections and I was right. able to talk to people. And yeah, versus, you know, just sitting in a hot tub by myself, feeling relaxed. But <laughs> yes. yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. And that's what I love the most about this whole Choose FI and Fire like groups in general is most people are just out to help other people. People who have gone along this journey and are or climbing you know, along the journey want to help people who are not quite to where they are yet. So, it's, and they want to learn from others who are beyond where they are as well, or, or, you know, anywhere in between like, oh, you're doing this. Like, what is that? Or what, what is this thing that you're talking about here? Like, like we were just talking about earlier before we started recording this metal t- tin roof is like, oh, like that lasts 60 years versus a typical roof is 15 years, but similar price. Hmm, Maybe I should look into that. You know, things like that, where you just start talking about anything, really anything. And you come to find ways of like, oh, there's a way to reduce my spending there. Or, oh, there's a free way of doing that instead. Or, oh, your library offers, you know, free camping gear. Maybe I should see if mine does, you know, things like that, right? Where it's just people talking about things that they're doing in their everyday life ways that they're improving their life. It's like, Hmm, you want to learn about this too? Sure. Like how long do you have to listen? Because I can talk (laughs) forever, you know? And that's the general gist of this community, which is why I like it so much. It's not, you know, the MLMs where we're trying to get you hooked up and because you're now in our system, like we are benefiting. It's not like that, right? It's a very give and take, like I'm learning from you. I will pass that information on to someone else. And I will now teach you about something else that you might not have learned. Right. And it's just this reciprocal type of community where it's like, everyone's looking to better themselves, but ultimately better the whole community as a result of it all. Right. And it's a place where, you know, money typically is a taboo subject, right? You know, most people don't talk to their neighbors, coworkers, friends, family, even about 
maybe even their spouses. Like they don't have anyone really to talk to about that, right? So this is such an open spot where you can say, hey, here's where we're at financially. Tell me what I need to be doing. Like, what am I doing wrong? Or where do you bank? Here's where I'm banking and I'm paying $25 a month in fees. Is there a way to get out of this? Or what credit cards out are out there that I can actually start utilizing these credit cards and earn some points to then give me free travel? Like, how does that work? And people will just tell you how it works. You know, like that's the whole beauty of all of this is you come up with the questions. There is someone out there who has a suggestion and then you can start digging into what that suggestion is and like, oh, okay, never thought of that. That's what I like about this so much is it's, it's so much like, I just want to help, you know, like I have started coaching people and it's really like a win-win. Like I am helping people from my coaching, but then I feel good afterwards. Cause I'm like, I know I just saved those people a couple thousand dollars a year just for after this conversation. And that makes me feel good. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's this win, like this just overall wins. And like, that's why I like coming on podcasts. Like the more people that we can reach out and tell about us weirdo nerd, you know, personal <laughs> finance freaks, you know? And I think a lot of people get scared off of it because yes. like, I don't understand it. Right. That's fine. Just like join some groups, read some books, listen to some podcasts, get that baseline understanding, and then just see what people are asking and just learn that way. Read through the different forums that are out there, whether it's, you know, Facebook or Reddit or blogs and comments on blogs, whatever it may be, whatever's like your mode of, you know, information absorption and start just reading. Well, that's all it is. It's just self-educating yourself. That's all it is. Cause most people are not taught money. Like I was not taught about money when I was growing up, you know, this just turned into this passion of mine and it happens to be beneficial, beneficiating Oh my gosh. It happens to be <laughs> beneficial for us that we're actually making money from this little hobby, right? It could have been golf that, you know, we don't really make money from golf, but whatever. But exactly. so for me, this is what it is. And it's, it's, this benefit has been compounding, right? Because it started 12, whatever years ago. And now we're at this point where in the thirties and we don't have to work if we don't want to work. It's, yeah. it's so nice. It's so nice. And I think one of my biggest takeaways, I guess, looking back is you're going to do something. Even once you reach this point of financial independence and financial freedom, you're going to do something like most people, when they hear like, Oh, you retired in your thirties, like you are going to be depressed. You're going to be bored and you're, you're going to do something for us. It's, you know, taking care of our kids right now. It could be, you know, working part-time at the library and stacking books, like something, you know, just to get out of the house, go be that barista. Oh, you're the almond milk girl, right? Like I, I want to, we're going to do something to get out and socialize. It could be volunteering where there's no pay involved at all, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is, is the whole point of it. It could be starting this podcast like you're doing. And maybe you put in for, you know, two, three years and you make a couple hundred dollars. You know what I mean? Like we have a blog. It doesn't make money. Like I'm not doing it to make money. I'm doing it to connect with other like-minded people, which is the greater good of all of this. Right. I think that's what you realize, like looking back is like, yes, the money is important, of course. And I I'm at this level of happiness because I don't have to work. Absolutely. But now I'm transitioning into like, I don't, I'm not looking at our numbers. I don't really care about our net worth. Like I know we're in a good spot that now I need to be building up these relationships. I need to foster, you know, this time with my kids. I need to reach out to my parents more, you know, those sorts of things that are becoming the frontline, you know, priority right now, which most people don't have time to do, which is, you know, again, this whole catch 22 is like, it's adding more happiness because now I'm focusing on the things that actually matter. Whereas most people have no clue who their kids are. You know, it's, it's sad to say, like they don't see their kids. You know, they see them for an hour and it's bickering and fighting and you're just, everyone's so stressed and just go to bed, leave, get out of the room, you know? And so sad that that's like the world we live in. It's like, do we have to make so much money? Like, it, would it be better if these super stressed parents can just maybe reduce their hours, reduce their income because of that, but actually spend more time with their kids? Like maybe that's what needs to be prioritized now. You know, like, it doesn't necessarily have to be the money side of things, which is crazy for someone like me to be saying this, right? <laughs> it's like, we need to be focusing on the relationships more because ultimately like that is what matters, right? Oh, absolutely. I know even last, was it last year, year before, year before, um, same thing. I was bored 
in retirement and a friend of mine, she's the manager of a store in the mall. And she's like, Hey, do you want to come and work a couple of shifts? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I worked for the winter yeah. and you know, I was in the mall selling a product that I actually enjoyed. So I got a great staff discount, which was, awesome. <laughs> and it was interesting though, because, you know, I had former coworkers from my corporate job come into the store and they're like, Oh, Oh, Wendy, like <laughs> what are you doing, you know, like went from corporate to working in the mall. And I'm like, I'm awesome. How are you? I'm like, do you want to try some essential oils? <laughs> and like, these are the great ones. And, you know, and we can talk about all these things because I was there because I wanted to be there. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there because I had to be there. And so I showed up differently. Yep. Exactly. I would have, right. I showed up not like, oh yeah, I've got to go do another shift at McDonald's. It's like, I get to work at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like all of these things. And you just, you, when you have the freedom to show up differently, in your life, then your whole life changes, right? Your energy levels are different. You're going into it because you're choosing to do that. Like you didn't have to go and work at that mall, but you're like, this is something to do. When, you know, May came around, it was summertime. Schedules are getting hectic with the kids. They were going to be off school. And I'm like, I don't want to be in the mall in the winter. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Like no harm, no foul. I was still, you know, here's my two weeks notice. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And it wasn't a big deal. Right. She'll find someone else. There'll be some, you know, students to pick up in the summer or something like that. Right. It's like, that's the beauty of this. You can pick and choose and design the work that you want to do, design the lifestyle that you want to have set up. Like it's up to you now. Like I want to, okay, I'm going to do this for the winters and that's it. And like, okay, great. Like go do, be an Uber each driver for the winter. So it's something to do, but then you just stop when you want to stop. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm good. Like I just did that just to do it. Like, yeah, the extra income was nice. You know, I was able, I, I earmarked that as my coffee fund or I earmarked mark that as my new hiking gear fund or whatever, something that you might not have spent if you didn't go and do that little job. But it, you're, like you said, like you're going in with just this different vibe, this different energy about it. It's like, I'm doing this because I'm choosing to do this. If I don't like the setup, if I don't like my coworkers, if I don't like this boss, if I don't like the hours, I'm done. Like, I just don't want to do it. Like, and that's the beauty to all of this. It's like, I'm starting this new writing job, job, I'm just putting it in quotes here, um, like to write one article a month for the globe. And it's like, okay, if I like this, I'm going to, I'll keep doing it. If I don't, if it's feeling more like a job, like then I'm done, but like I can pick and choose what I want to do. Right. And that's the whole beauty to all of this is you get to design your days based off of what gives you the most energy basically. Absolutely. I was in one of the five groups recently. Well, and it was, it was actually quite a while ago. I'd commented. Um, I think I was saying that I celebrated my two year retirement anniversary. Yes. Would have been back in like November or something like that. And so I had a ton of comments and people were like, how did you do that? <laughs> you know, so I, you know, kind of explain and have my spiel and whatever. And they're like, well, what do you do with your time? And I'm like, well, you know, I do all of these things. And um, they're like, well, how do you survive. Right. And so I, I, I don't know, I have seven different income streams. Like there's a bunch of different things that I do. Mm-hmm. And somebody commented recently. So it just like popped up and her comment was like, well, I thought it was uh financial independence, retire early. Like you've got a lot of jobs that doesn't sound like retirement. And I'm like, I have a lot of income streams, right. Some of them feel like work. Right. So that's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's these, you know, internet retirement police out there. They're like, yeah. you're bringing in income somehow. You are not retired, right? But it's like, you made that choice to leave your stressful corporate job that had these certain hours. And instead, I'm going to do this instead, whatever this is, you know, like you are designing your days. Some of it might bring in income. Some of it might, might not, like that's up to you. And I feel like there's, I am all about like the whole fire financial independence and retire early. because. That is, to me, that is you are retiring early. You are choosing to leave your job to do something else. And whatever that something else is, people like to attack it if it makes money. But in my mind, I'm like, most people who are not retiring at 65, who are retiring younger than that, are going to do something, especially if you've made it. If you've made it to that point where you were able to reach this point where work does become optional, that means you are a motivated person. You are likely a type A person. You are likely a planner type person. You are, you know, thinking ahead and, you know, you're not just getting money, spending it. Like you 
are putting these gears in motion, which takes some time to get to you to this point. Like you're not just going to turn off your brain and be like, all right, pina coladas all day. Like that's not the type of person you are most likely. Right. So like, that's my biggest thing is like, you are not just going to sit on the couch and not do anything. You're going to reach out and be like, Oh yeah, you've got that little thing going on in the winter. Sure. I'll do that. Like you will find things to do. And I think people get so much flack about that. It's like, well, you're, you're actually, you're not retired. I'm like, I'm choosing to do these things. Like I don't have to do these things. We are fine financially without these things. But it might be a, a side gig that you had built up over the last five years that's now very passive and might take, you know, an hour a month or an hour a day. That's passive. That's very passive. You know, it might it might have required more work up front, but now you've built it to this thing where it's like a 15 minute in the morning. I just have to do, 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 do. And it's good. And it over the month, I get make $2,000. I'm like, that's, that's amazing. Like, but yeah. some people might say, well, you're working because of that. Well, not really, you know, so it's, it's, there's so much out there once people hear about financial independence, because most people who are reaching this in their twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, you know, prior to typical retirement age, most people come out as defensive. It's like, you can't do that. If I can't do it, you can't do it. And here's why, like you are still working. So you're not actually there. So it's, it's, it's sad that people go at it in that angle versus like, Hmm, maybe I can learn from this person and see what they did. Like, let me listen. Most people don't like to listen, right? Like most people are so egocentric and want to hear about me, me, me. It's like, well, if you are hearing the story of these people who are doing this, and it's not just one person, you know, there are thousands of people doing this. Like, why don't you take an hour of your time to see what this person did? Can you apply any of that to your life? All it's, just apply 1% of what they just said to your life. That's it. And like, do that again next month, you know, next week, whatever. Right. And like, just make these little tweaks, but most people don't want to do it because they can't imagine having to make a change to their life. So then it turns into this jealousy aspect. And then this jealousy aspect turns into this, you know, hateful, especially on the internet, you know, people can just write anything (laughs) they want. Right. So instead, like, I just wish more people would see it with an open mind. But really when I, for me, like personally, when I have these conversations and I write blog posts and whatever it is, I'm like, I just want to reach out to 1% of the people that are listening to this. If 1% of the people that are listening to this, like connect and click and want to hear more, great. It's worth it. You know, like I'm not here for the 99% who are going to bash it and say, this isn't possible. You inherited money or, you know, whatever, right? Like you won the lottery. People can go, so many people think that, right? But if that 1% is like, oh, like I actually like like the way they spoke or uh, really resonated with some of the things they said, like that's who I'm trying to target, right? And I feel like that's who we want to bring in to our community, right? It's like, join the club. (laughs) Exactly. Over here. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it's sad when you hear all the negativity around out there is like, well, you can't, there's no way you did that. Like you're not retired. Like you're actually still working. Like, well, yeah. Like it's bringing in $20,000 like that to me. Like I can go and work at my job and make way more than that. Like people, a lot of people, like all these fire bloggers out there, some of them have taken off and make money, decent money for it. Right. But for the large majority of the flyer fire bloggers and podcasters and whoever out there is like, you're not making a a living wage off of this. Like if I looked at my annual or my hourly pay, like I'm getting paid pennies to write on my blog. You know, like if I wanted to make money, I would go work at McDonald's, right? Like that is a better paying job than what I'm doing now. Like I'm not doing it for the money. Like, so I think a lot of people don't see it. They just see it as black and white. It's like, oh, you're doing something like you're not actually retired. It's like, well, I'm choosing to do this. That is the whole purpose to all of this. Like I have the flexibility and freedom to do this. So life is good. You know, it's not stressful. It's not exhausting. I'm not coming home feeling stressed. You can go for a walk at nine and start things at 10 and be done by 11. Like you're good. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the beauty behind all of this that a lot of people miss is like, you are designing your days the way you want them. Sure. Some things might bring in income. Some things might not, but that is beyond the point. That's not the point of it all. Right. So I think, um, that part gets lost on a lot of people, unfortunately. Absolutely. hundred percent. And 
yeah, I think the listeners today, like I said, they're going to be taking notes and, and finding all of your great tips and, um, yeah, just seeing what actually is possible. You know, if you can get over trying to keep up with everybody else, keeping up with the Joneses, the Joneses are up to their eyeballs in debt. I'm just going to say it out loud. <laughs> um, you don't have to compete with them. You can do your own thing. And by designing your life the way you want it to feel and tracking, you know, what are you doing right now? What are some areas that you can cut back in? Where can you sort of use the the snowball effect in the opposite way? You know, not paying off debt, but creating assets and, that end up paying you dividends over time. That's how you do it. So thank you so much, Court. Yeah, of course. This has been such a wonderful conversation. Um, how can people find you? If they want to find out more, they want to read your blog, where can they find you? Yeah, so our blog is Modern Family, spin on the TV show Modern Family, but FI for financial independence. So modernfamily.com is our blog. Um, I'm going through major blogging fatigue, so it's not very active, but blog there. Um, and Or on Instagram, also at Modern Family. Again, not super active, but please like just feel free to reach out, like send me a little message. Hey, like whatever, like had a question about this or thanks for this, whatever. I just, I like the connection, right? Like that's what it all is for me. So feel free to, you know, reach out. Um, but yeah, I do some coaching as well, like very part-time. So if that's something that you might want to be interested in, let me know, you know, all these things, uh, you know, it's just, it's such a cool way to connect with people. That's, that's what this is. Like, that's why I have the blog. That's why I have the Instagram account. Um, but yeah, that's the way to find me. If you're want to just come say hi. I love it. I'll have the links in the show notes so people can find you. Thank you again. This has been just a wonderful conversation and I'm so glad that we were able to do it. Yes, totally agree. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Thanks court. Yeah. And thank you, everybody. We're going to be back with some more episodes with guests. We're going to have some solo episodes. If you have any questions about today's topic, about court, about different ways to save a few bucks and snowball that into, into your own FI journey, let me know. I want to hear from you. Talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Fire Yourself First podcast. If you have any questions or comments about today's topic, feel free to reach out on social media or through my website at www.wendyverway.com. And don't forget to tune in next time for more tips and advice on achieving financial freedom to create a life you don't need a vacation from. Thank you.